Oh. Right, that's all right, and that's set up like that. And hey, everybody, welcome. Hey, Caroline. Hi, Joey. Hi, Pat. No worries, Pat. Hi, Raquel. Hi, Sue. Welcome. Hi, Star. Hi, Bev. Welcome. Hope everybody's well. I'm going to finish my coffee before it goes cold again. Mm. Oh, lovely. Right. Today, I wanted to do a picture out of the um, mouse guard because I've not done that one for a while. And I wanted to do something different. And while I were at it, I thought, as you know, I like to use uh, ink tents a lot. And I thought, everybody, there's people out there who haven't got ink tents. And let's face it, they are expensive. But I wanted to show you a way that you can still do ink colouring without having ink tents. Now, obviously, it's not going to be permanent because there's only ink tents that's permanent. But what everybody has lying about, usually, is ink pads. Now, whether it's uh, these cheap, big, juicy ink pads, uh, or whether it's individual, like Tim Holtz's Distress Inks, which to me are still expensive. Not everybody's got them. Uh, and then there's these spectrum noir ones that come in a three set so they harmonize together with colors these are cheaper but they all ink and we can color we with ink like we do with ink tents hey kayla welcome that's all right joey enjoy your d dinner lunch whichever <laughs> Um, and it's straightforward I just put ink onto a mat uh, you can see the shape of the ink pad that I've smushed into here this one wants redoing this is brushed corduroy I've been practicing on one of other pages just to make sure I weren't talking crap <laughs> and they actually does work and it does so this This is a cheaper version other than ink tents. You, if there's large areas, I put it down with a brush like that or that or thin lines. I use that one. I also use my water brush to pick it up and paint with it. Either way works. So that's what I'm going to do. No ink tents today. We're doing inks but remember the water bay the water reactive so they're not permanent like ink tenses thank you pat hey up joey what do you want hmm? Hmm? you've had your tea go and play right <laughs> hi joe beth welcome I can't help you there, Kayla, because I don't stream from a phone. But I'm sure somebody in stream will know. Right, so I've picked this picture. It is a double page one, but I don't expect to do all of it. Uh, and I think I'll do the biggest part, which is the what me and Caroline cannot figure out. Is it a ferret? Is it a some kind of dog or what we don't know doesn't look like a dog's body but it looks like a dog's face so we're going with mythical stoat <laughs> so if that works for you guys it works for us <laughs> 
So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to concentrate on the face to start off with. So I'll move the book that way a bit. And I'll zoom in. We'll try two clicks to start off with, see how far we go going. It does, doesn't it, Kayla? <laughs> Get off of there. Go away. <laughs> it's a uh, hybrid, but it's a mythical book, so we'll pick mythical type creature. <laughs> it's cute wherever it is, yeah. Right, Joe Beth. <laughs> so we're going for stout or ferret, whichever way you want to think of it. And I think two clicks is enough. T let me know if it's not zoomed in enough and I'll uh, adjust it a bit. That way, keep moving book wrong way. There we go. Right, so this is quite a large area of the face, but it's shaped. So I don't want to go in with a brush and do a flat colour because that's going to lose all the shape. So I'm going to use the water brush and I've got two inks. I've got, uh, at the minute, I've got co brush corduroy distress ink and gather twigs distress ink. But I've also got an autumn pad. Sorry about the noise, I forgot to mute my phone. I've also got an autumn pad that's got a mixture of colour. It ranges from uh, mid-brown um, to a yellowy brown down to greens. Now, this end of the pad, the browns, is good for highlight uh, in some areas. So I might use some of that as well. The feet say ferret, yeah, definitely. Hmm. Sorry, I keep moving my head way at camera again. It's tilted wrong way again. Let me just move it a little bit. Oh, come on. There we go. Try that. <laughs> right, so I'm going to pick the darkest, which is gathered twigs. And I'm just taking a very minute little bit, just picking it up on the end of the brush. And you'll see that even this sometimes is too much. So um, if you have scrap paper and just test it first. Thing, you know just how much you're going in with and I'm gonna go over where he's put the shade in and just darken it down a little bit more now unlike ink tents you do have to pick ink up quite often because it soon thins out but that's all right and I'm going to take it up to this line. Now it seems to be wearing some kind of drapery and then its ear comes out behind it. So I'm just going up to this whatever it is. It seems to be attached to this crown. I'm just going to pick up the collar and colour it in. Now you can keep to just one colour because like I say it thins out, it goes lighter and you can do it that way but it tends to end up a bit streaky. So you go in again to try and get rid of the streak and as you can see it goes darker again so you can't really use efficiently one colour pad. Now I've come to his eye so I'm going to pick the other one up the brushed corduroy it's slightly lighter and I'm going to take that under the eye it's got more like a golden tone to it this this one where the other one is more of a brown a dark brown so this is all right where highlights are which would be towards the front of the face because that's where I'm imagining the lights hitting it. And then as we come under chin it's going to be darker again and blend back up that way. 
and keep dampening end of my brush as well because it makes it easier to move the ink and blend it in okay Caroline I'm going to come under the nose now because I've picked fresh ink up again so it's darker again so I'm going to put it where I want it darker and then just blend it down to where I want it lighter again and again pick another bit up and it's going to be darker so I'll go under the nose and blend it down until it goes lighter again dampen brush and the paper works well as long as you're not using too much water just damp that's all you need and this time I'm working from this dark line here and working up because there's no nose tied under now then I want it light across the top of the nose we can use all that ink because that's going to be quite a light area that's all right sweetie you bounce about don't go and hurt yourself though <laughs> right now I'm coming here, this is going to be shaded again because it's got the crown above and this uh, material hanging down. So I'm going back to the gathered twigs, pick a little bit of that up and I'm starting in this dark corner and I'll bring it out to where I need it. And if it's not dark enough, again I can do another layer and it'll darken again. And each layer will make slightly darker shade my mat now looks like I've got raindrops on it look and I'm picking up one little tiny bit each time and I'm going in A little goes a long way. Hi Shannon, welcome. Right, now I've got to put shaping back in on that snout. So picking dark one up again and I'm taking it in this corner and following that line and just filling that triangle with the dark one. And again where these creases are just dabbing a little bit in darken the creases and it's just gonna add more shape back I've missed this area so I'm gonna wash that dark off make sure my brush is only damp and not wet Pick a little bit of that up. Well, I thought it was perfect, but it's getting water out again. So I'll block that up. That's all right, Kayla. What are you colouring? Got to blend that in there because I added too much water. I thought I were all right and it weren't. So I'm just blending it across. It's going to darken it a little bit, but that's okay. Right. 
Right, let's have a look. What do I need to do? Just going to bring some dark and shade these lines that he's drawn in. Give it up a little bit. I'm only dabbing it with end up brush as well. I'm not um, I'm not pressing the brush down. I'm just using the tip. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm still using the dark one. building colour up under his neck I suppose it could be a sheet having all this sheeting all over but we never know right and it's quite dark so I'm going to pick quite a bit up against this material Drag it down. Off screen a little bit, aren't I? Because I had to move my camera. Oh, bear with me a sec. Move laptop. I've got such a limited space today all right still using gathered twigs i'm going to come in this area now Hi Brittany, welcome. Scroll up again, I can't see. Oh, awesome, you're doing a background with Neos. Yeah, I only have the 15 ones. I bought a couple of se separate ones recently to go with them. Open stock ones. Uh, Frightlands, I don't think I know that one. I'm not sure, but it sounds good. Mm. Uh, I recently did a picture in the Colour Morphia. Uh, the uh, dinosaur it's over five is it four or five uh, videos if you want to watch them back I'll be doing one in Mythomorphia over the Halloween so that's one to look forward to right I'm going to take a little bit of black sword and put it down on my mat because I want some black mixing in with some brown to make it darker. 
And what I'm going to use that for is his nose. So I'm going to take a little bit of black salt and mix it with the uh, gathered twigs. And paint his nose in. That's good. I'm thinking of doing the werewolf one. I'm not sure yet, but I'll let you know. Could be a mythomorphia anyway. Right. Uh, what more shading under his neck? So I'm going to go with the gathered twigs again. Yeah, it's dry. And I'm just feathering some colour out. I think Ted's gone outside in code again, Dot. He'll be on his drain pipe. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Doc. Oh, I heard that. Oh, Just blending it in a little bit more. That's where I thought, Kayla. Not many people th um, know about using them for colouring with. So that's why I thought we'd do something different. I'm just going to put some uh, feathered lines off of this base where his foot is. Darken that a little bit. You can, Caroline. Yeah, you can use fine line as, as ink as well if you scribble on a mat and then pick up with a brush. The um, Arteza fine liners work well for that if, I, if you've got any of those. Uh, Caroline uses the colour it, isn't it Caroline? Are they called colour it, the ones you've got? Just put a bit more shading under this cheek area. Dampen the brush again. Oh, our teaser, right. Oh, of course, the other ones are gel pens, aren't they? Not fine liners. Sorry, getting mixed up. Uh, I want to look a bit more dark under this nose. So I'm going to blend that in. Drag that down.
Yeah. yeah. Test them on uh, scrap paper first, or test them in the back of a colouring book. But any should work the same. Uh, but not alcohol markers, no. Alcohol markers will just bleed through. They have to be water based. Right. Now, this is all clothing here. And then it fur again down there. So I'm going to jump over to that area in the centre. Start on underneath his belly. Fill some colour in this area. The main thing you have to remember is to don't let an area dry too much because you'll get an harsh line when you come to put your next line next to it. I've seen a video recently about somebody testing the difference between Jane Davenport, Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, uh, Neo Colour and another one. I can't remember what the name of the other one were. But they, they used them all as uh, for a palette and picking them up their brush. So yeah, they should all work the same. It was on a card making site. I'll try and remember where it was where while I'm colouring. Only I've got a terrible memory. So it might not come to me. Change to a small brush for this area because it's getting quite big. Have you picked any up? Or are you thinking about it? Dampen it off a little bit. silly woman. Never mind. Can still work with it. And I still haven't turned the phone off ever. Let me do that. Darken this a bit more soon as I've gone dark on top. I'm a whispering, sorry. <laughs> We're telling myself off. <laughs> the sound. Thank you. There we go, switched it off.
I don't have any uh, sprays, but they look good. I don't want that. Oh. <laughs> Looking for Matt, it's right in front of me. Hi, Cassandra, welcome. Uh, you're welcome, Kayla. Um, I use them a lot. I just want to darken this area but I can't get in with smallest of brushes there so I'm using the water brush again and the thing with spine up bog you can't tell what is supposed to be part of the pattern where it is it don't make sense it's just like fur lines sticking in the spine but seeing as he's got clothing and things hanging off him I can't really tell where it is these are makeup brushes so yeah there's uh, some by somebody called picket fence that's designed just for card makers and quite frankly they're a ridiculous price and they know better than what makeup brushes are so in my opinion don't buy them unless you want something fancy with a name on then by all by all means buy them but not everybody can afford their prices. Just put some dark around this axe. Is it an axe? Yeah. And why would a ferret be carrying an axe? Some more dark in that area around there. I'm going to have to dampen my brush again in a sec. They will have been so. Minor makeup brushes. I've got them. Um, uh, where did I get them from? I can't remember if it were eBay or Amazon. But I've got a pack of 10 in a box, a cardboard box, and they only cost me uh, six British pounds for 10 brushes. So I'm well impressed and I used them a lot with card making because uh, I don't know if ever, anybody ever saw the first video I put up on YouTube when I was very nervous and but I was showing how you can dampen the brush just the end of the bristles to move distressing about across uh, the piece of card and get it smooth. Like now, you can see because I keep putting water right on under these bristles and picking ink up, it helps to move this uh, ink about. Where when it starts going dry, 
I can feel that the ink ain't moving, it, it drags, it just sits where I put it and don't, I can't move it about. Right now, look, it's starting to drag a bit because the bristles are going dry again. Well, they keep leaving the door open. I don't know, I haven't tried them with pan pastel. I'll have to go to test. I know the little ones won't because the bristles is too hard. It'll just dig into the pastel, I should think. But the bigger ones being softer, might. darken this back area before I come in with on it brushes again hi Louise welcome The thing to remember with these brushes, if you are using them with the bristles damp, only lightly rub over the paper, don't uh, press on, or else you'll pull the paper. Oh, that's fun. I was colouring with my granddaughter last month. It's something I love to do. shadow up against this uh, whatever's tied around it You can rub them on a cloth uh, till you get the ink out, or you can wash them in the sink or uh, on uh, tissue paper. While I'm working, 
and doing a picture, then I rub them on here or tissue paper. I don't clean them till uh, I've totally finished doing what I'm doing, end of day. Then I clean them. A um, little bit of washing up liquid and water. Get all ink out. If I'd got a lot of brushes, then I'd never clean them. Uh, I'd have uh, put labels on the handles for what colours I use them for. But because I'm limited to what brushes I've got at the minute, I have to wash them in between doing different colours. Uh, that's his fur done for now until it's dry enough. And what I like to do is cheat with fur every now and again and make things easy for me and they could probably make it easy for you so I'll show you how I do it. Get the uh, brushed cord dry. My thing of brushes, where have you gone? Okay, I've got a stipple brush somewhere and my eyes can't see it. There it is, it's hiding, look. Kenny, welcome. And Mr. Poor. Where for Mr. Poor? There's a front one missing somewhere. It... Ah, it's up there, isn't it? It's not an ear. I thought it were a big ear, it isn't it's a paw, isn't it? Thank you, Caroline or Ray. I bet it's Ray who spotted it. <laughs> With a light one, then I'm taking the light one this time because it's celled up, so it's gonna have the light it in it. And then I'll mix a little bit of dark in just for this bottom area. Blend that into it. There we go. And just like that, it's done. Raise out. Oh, <laughs> you spotted it this time. Right. I've got a stipple brush. And I don't go all over it, but I do like every now and again to just dab some ink on and you don't seem to be picking any up. What's up with you? Don't tell me this pad's gone dry already. Right, looks like it has. Get it out that way instead then. bristles and I just like to stipple onto a page every now and again just in some areas and for some reason it's not picking this ink up properly Only work in areas where you want a shorter fur, not where it wants long fur. I think the bristles has gone a bit dry, but it's working slowly. I've just got to build it up a bit. But it's cheating, you don't have to do lots of flakes. Mum? Hello, Ez. You best shut that back door or else she's going to run out there. Yeah, because you can try and get out the window. Oh, I'll let her out then. She probably wants to go out. Can you talk her through Pardon? Can you talk her through here? Right. Can I have some cutting rice on my uh, thingies after you're done? Yeah. Thank 
We still have some like clay left in the pot, don't we? No. I thought you'd had all your rice anyway. Hmm? Um, if there isn't, it's a yellow rice, but. A bit over the nose, way. I love this. It's short fur. Right, put it on the side. Then. You can shut me that back door if he's back in. No, Shannon, I don't store them upside down because it's a myth. If you store them upside down, all you're doing is leaking your ink out of your pad into your lid. What is? The distress inks. Uh. Uh, right, what we're going to do, oh yeah, see if we can zoom in one more. Are you going? Yours don't leak. Oh, well, you're lucky then, because mine do. Especially when I've just refilled them. Oh, I suppose that could be me just pouring too much ink on the pad. I don't know. I don't know what that is, Joey. Hi, Corolla. Welcome. Off. Oh, forgot I'd still got that on. Get that off. My biggest problem is leaving them on desk with lids off and then they dry out. Hi Selena, welcome. This is the Spectrum Noir ink. They've got two kinds. One's water reactive and one isn't. This is the water reactive one that I've got. And you can, anybody who's thinking of buying some, you can tell the difference because this one's got a distress tool on the picture on the front. The other one, as an
This is a nice colour. It's like a cross between a green and a yellow. It's going to be an ear somewhere around there because I've just spotted one there. Mm, can anybody see it? Caroline, I need your help. Hi, Mary, welcome. I've spotted an ear there. I can't see one on this side. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, just go and have a look at your picture for me, sweetie. While away, I'll do behind the crown Yeah, that's why I'm not sure on Sue, because my eyesight's not very good. Caroline's got the same book, so she's going to go and have a look for me. Uh, there is a little one on the other side, just behind the crown. Right. Is it this little bulging area here then that Sue's just mentioned? Tucked up. Right. right, I'll leave that area then. Thanks everybody. Thanks Caroline. Right, best not stick green on it then, eh? This will be part of material still. I need a little bit of brown back for them two ears then. Hmm. I definitely want to refill in that one. say again that one weren't it I've got a bit of green on it but the brown should cover it that's it and then this one
Just that off a bit. Got a bit dark. That's dry and I'll go over it brown again. Wash that off. Thank you, Kayla. Just put in the next green that comes in that pack, the mid tone, where I want some shading. I'm going to have to put that in. I'll go over it again with the first colour I used and blend it over again. tone again and these creases are close together so I'm gonna put that one there I've got cat's hair stuck to this somewhere I can see it every time I move the brush where have you gone you swine
because these have been specially packed as a three pack the colours uh, work harmoniously together that's an odd word they designed to go together <laughs> you muted me <laughs> I don't usually talk quiet. <laughs> oh dear. I'm just seeing the make sure I've not missed anything. Nobody's asked me anything. Welcome back, Bethan, and thank you. My phone keeps doing some bleeping tonight. Anybody would think I were wanted. And it's only adverts. eBay keep trying to get me to buy stuff <laughs> yeah spectrum noir ink a minute hi beth i didn't see you come in sweetie yeah so these ones they come in a pack of three so they already color matched all different greens these are the water reactive ones um, they've got the sign of the blending tool on it there is another set that's uh, water resistant for stamping with but I don't have them ones excuse me Not seen it, Kayla. Excuse me, I don't have the other methographic either. Right. I'm gonna put the darker green down this time. I'm gonna use it on this back bit. at the base
quite quick doing it this way as well. You can cover an area quickly. Okay, Kayla. I'm going to go over the lines again, deepen them up. One. Hi Robert, welcome. How are you doing today, Robert? Hope you're well. Right. Now, get rid of that dark one because I've got to come with the lighter one. Fill this area because it's all hanging down. Lay it on the lines again. So I was looking forward to the Halloween colorathon that's happening on the 25th. That's all right, so see you soon. Have a good day.
we've still got the bottom Bethan. So it's always there. If you just type that in, you don't have to search for link. The bot should bring it. Hopefully, if he's working. <laughs> have a good day at work, Joey. See you soon. Don't look like he's working, does it? He's gone on off time. <laughs> oh, pickle. You have it saved in your clipboard. That's good. I thought you'd gone off running to find it. <laughs> I can't wait. We don't to celebrate Halloween here and being out in country you don't get many people go trick or treating so we get we miss out. Kids think it's a good thing because they get to eat all the sweets to themselves. Okay, Bethan. <laughs> That's all right then. <laughs> Although you do miss part of the stream if you're running off to forget stuff, but if you're happy, that's fine. Now, what's this thing? It looks like some kind of stuffed toy stuck to a handle or a sword. Okay, Kayla, have a good day. You're welcome. Right, that is is tartan done. I've done it in a green shade. I'm thinking something different on this. It looks like metal work, but I don't want to do metal. Not with inks anyway. I haven't learned how to do metal with inks. So what I'm going to do is get this bright pad. And it's got lots of bright colours in it. And if I squeeze it a bit like that, squeeze my hands over it, it puts colour in the lid. As long as it's not gone dry. And then I can pick colour up. I've got a bit of orangey pink here. As you see, a little goes a long way. And then I'll go back in again and add more to darken it. Some of that colour out and then I change to the yellow. Put some of that down. And a bit of the pink. I can 
do rainbow colours look because it changes it back to orange when it hits the yellow. Welcome back, Corolla. Right. Now, I presume this goes underneath here, but it's not got the same shaping. Showing you when it's off screen. So, try again. This bit under here. It don't look the same pattern as this up here. But I presume it's got to be the same. Because it doesn't look like fur. So it's not part of animal. And it's not part of this. Or it could be. could be bunched up from this one. Hmm. I'll leave that for last. <laughs> Mine do too, Kenny. <laughs> Trying to figure out why it is on these pictures. It's only this book that does it to me.
Going off screen again, Anta. Seven. Thank you, Pat. Mm -hmm. Sword. And, oh no. Got a mistake already. Don't know if you can see that, but I've accidentally blobbed green ink all the way up there. must have put my mat down upside down <laughs> Some kind of chain thing hanging down here, so do that with a blow. Um, I think that's the other side of that rope, so that can get blow as well. Hmm. Oh, 
like that a little bit. one lipstick I'm gonna wash all that blue and green out my bristles dry it off a bit and then pick some of that one lipstick up it's quite vibrant this one some more ink on this bottom edge but I don't have a silver so we're gonna have to be unconventional what the heck is that got a strange shape behind this X shape thing here it looks like elt but it's flat at blade there and pointed up there so must be some strange shape right. so I want to go old paper the two much more water well that's as close as I can get into tip on
Well, at least it's exercise. Dried marigold. I'm going to use that on this toy. Must symbolise something, but I don't know what. <laughs> Food again, Corolla. Let's see if I can repair that brown spot then. Green on his fur. Not moving the green. Oh well, it's got a bit of green in his fur. <laughs> I'm always snacking, so I can't say all to bet it. <laughs> Dog in his foot down that I've just noticed I missed. It looks like he's got a green tattoo. Oh well.
He has a birthmark, yeah. <laughs> he does. <laughs> See, even I make mistakes. Right. 22. I'll do the little mouse. If I can get him on table enough. I'm stuck again. What's this? Looks like some kind of crash helmet tied to his arm. Big shoulder pad. Where's he from? Colby's. <laughs> Do it brown then, eh? showing me age aren't I saying Colby's and Dynasty and Dallas just like watching them when I was younger welcome back Caroline <laughs> yeah, walnut shell for a shoulder pad. Like I say, where is he from? Colby's. 
and see if I can dull some of this paint down a little bit and then I can use it for his feet. Bring it a bit further, even though I can't see it. So I'll colour that. His tail doesn't line up with the other side of the page, look. It's lower.
Ten two. Finding little bits to do now because I'm not going to get all the page done. There's a rope on his body. Bye, Corolla. Oh, not saying bye, Corolla. You're saying bye, Pat. Bye, Pat. <laughs> Have a good day. Hello, Ellen. Welcome. Get some of these steps. up knocking this water off in a minute if I don't move it. Oops, I forgot to mask the edge off. I've gone over edge. I'm going to 
helmet with that in. Drive safe, Bethan. I'll be finishing now, so I'll see you next time. Take care, sweetie. Let me zoom out. Oh, my mouse is not working. Come on, silly mouse. Thank you. Uh, not a plastic spoon, no, it's a brush. I have a set of all different size brushes. I'm picking distress ink up with the brush and rubbing it on where I need it. I'm also using a water brush and picking it up off a plastic sheet. And I'm running out of space. <laughs> As you can see, I'm in a little tight area. Right, so that were a demonstration today on how you can colour with uh, various inks, uh, whether they Timalt's Distress Inks or Spectrum Noir water-based inks, blendable inks. Or large dye inks you can use anything uh, to colour away <laughs> that's all right Ellen um, I just wanted to show something different from ink tents because I always use ink tents as you know uh, but not everybody can afford ink tents so this is a cheaper version Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Caroline. And thank you for thumbs up, everybody. Thank you for reminding Bethan. Um, so I hope you could take something away from this uh, and use it. Thank you, Jo Beth. I'm not very good at explaining at times, but I hope uh, someone it's helped. And thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Yeah, take care, Corolla. Bye, Shannon. Sorry it were a short visit, Ellen. I hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Jo Beth. I will, I'll say hi to Ian. Thank you, Corolla. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye.